Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. We're going to hear the story of Pentecost today and how uh, God's Spirit showed up in a rush of a wind and in tongues that looked like fire uh, and rested on the disciples. So you'll see some of that imagery throughout the worship service today. Are there announcements to get us started? Then we begin with our call to worship. I invite you to rise as you are able. God has done great things for us. We declare God's mighty works with all that we have. In a world where there is deceit and unkindness, we declare God's mighty works with all we have. We praise the one who has kept us safe and provided for us. We worship the one who has blessed us with holy wisdom. Let us worship God together. Come, Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Jesus, our sibling and friend, we thank you for your example which guides us as we share the good news of God's love with a hurting world. Thank you for protecting us, teaching us, and equipping us to partner with you to work for love and justice. Help us share the joy we've found in our relationship with you. Empower us with the Holy Spirit that we might testify to God's goodness. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 267, Come, O Spirit, Dwell Among Us.
be with you all. Let us take a moment and share God's peace with one another. God's peace be with everybody here today. God's peace be with everybody joining us online or watching the recording later in the week. At this time, we're going to collect up our prayers for later on in the worship service. If you are joining us online and have prayer concerns, you can type them into the chat or the comments. Tim and Jenny are back there, ready to scribble madly to write them down and bring them up to me. Um, please use first names only. And uh, if we get them in time for the prayers today, we'll include them today. If not, if you're watching the recording later in the week, you can still put in prayer concerns. Um, I do check it at the end of the week, and I'll pray for those folks at the end of this week. If you're here in the sanctuary, who are we praying for today? Jean and Gwen. Tracy and Kim. Tammy and Paul. All those who are traveling for Memorial Day weekend. All right, we'll raise up those names as well as any who come in online a bit later on in the worship service. Right now, let us pray for ourselves and for God's work in our lives. Gracious God, Jesus prayed that his disciples would be protected from deceit. Sometimes it is not easy to be bold in sharing how God's love has impacted our lives. We ask forgiveness for the times we have not been strong enough in sharing our truth for fear of how others would respond. Help us find strength in your promises to us. Help us share our joy with abundance. Amen. We take a moment now for silent confession, reflection, and prayer. Friends, take comfort. None of Jesus' disciples found the work to be easy, and sometimes they faltered. We aren't expected to be perfect either. We are sanctified in God's truth. Christ prays for us and guides our words and actions, and we always have opportunities to grow in our discipleship, as long as we trust in Christ to lead us. By the grace of God, we are forgiven. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today comes from the writing of the book of Romans. We're going to be reading from the eighth chapter, starting at the 22nd verse. The Apostle Paul writes, We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. 
Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. the word of the Lord. Now I changed the order of the scriptures a bit for today. We're going to read from the gospel next, and that's because I want to preach on the one from Acts, uh, the reading from Acts. So we're going to read from the gospel of St. John next. Uh, We're going to be reading from St. John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27, and then skipping ahead a bit to chapter 16, starting at the second half of verse 4. Jesus tells the disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, He will testify to you on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me where are you going, but because I have said these things to you, sorrow fills your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I did not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will speak not on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I have said he will take what is mine and declare it to you. the Gospel of the Lord. Our hymn for today is number 292, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
The Pentecost story is found in Acts chapter 2, starting at the first verse. And this story happens shortly after Jesus has been crucified, died, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. And this story happens when the disciples are trying to figure out what to do now and traumatic time in their faith. They have followed Jesus around and then had him taken from them and tortured and killed. They had him reappear to them after he rose again from the dead. And he encouraged them to go out into the world. He encouraged them to have his peace in their heart, and to go love the world. But they haven't quite figured out how to do all of that. And then they see him ascending. They go to Galilee. They see him ascending into heaven. And then they get back together and they say, what now? After all that has happened, after all of the crazy of these past months, what do we do? Has this meant anything? Has this changed anything? And if so, what does it mean that my life has been changed by the fact that I've been hanging around with Jesus these last few years? And what does it mean now at this point in their lives to move forward with the knowledge and the information and the faith that they have gained. They could just go back to fishing or tax collecting or the other things they've done. They could just choose to be who they used to be. But something has fundamentally changed in them. So that doesn't feel right but they're not sure where to go next. It is into that time in the lives of the disciples that Jesus sends the Holy Spirit. Remember from what we just read from John, from the Gospel of John, he promises that he's going to send an advocate, a counselor, somebody who will show them the way forward. But at this point in time, they haven't yet felt that. But today is the day. It's been 50 days since Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead. It's been 50 days since Easter. And they're all gathered together in one place, wondering what comes next. And in that place, Jesus sends the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, it's not quiet and peaceful. When the Holy Spirit comes, we get all of this great imagery. There's a sound like a rush of a violent wind. There's tongues that appear like fire on the disciples. And there's a cacophony of sounds as they all start speaking in a variety of languages. It's such a loud and noisy and kind of chaotic moment that the other people around start coming and saying, what is going on? Are they drunk? which gives Peter the opportunity to preach, to say, we are not drunk as you suppose, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, I know some people who get drunk by 9 o'clock in the morning, but apparently they don't. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning, we're not drunk. He says, this is the Holy Spirit. This is the promise that God made in the Old Testament. It is the promise that Jesus made right before his crucifixion. It is the promise now fulfilled that the Holy Spirit has come to walk with and be with God's disciples, to be with those who believe, and to guide them forward. From Acts chapter 2, starting at the first verse. 
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's amazing deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. I don't know about you all, but there's days when I feel an awful lot like the disciples before the Holy Spirit shows up. There's days when I look around after 24 years of ordained ministry and I say, now what? What's next? Where are we supposed to go? What are we supposed to do? How do we weather the storms that we have been through? And how do we go and grow into vital life as the church in this time and place? I went to the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America Synod Assembly this past weekend. I'm required to go to that assembly and the United Church of Christ Assembly, which is coming up in two weekends, uh, in order to maintain my roster status. It's not my favorite thing to go sit in meetings all day, um, but it's important work that we do. And while I was at the assembly this weekend, they made an announcement about the various churches that have closed in this past year. 
And one of those churches was one that I was the pastor of many years ago, St. John's Lutheran Church in Leopolis, Wisconsin, was part of the seven church uh, conglomerate parish that I was the lead pastor of in the early 2000s. And it was seven tiny churches that all got together and brought on board one lead pastor and a few part-time people so that they could continue their important work and their important mission in the places they existed. And since the early 2000s when I was a pastor there, two of those churches have closed their doors. And I look at that and I wonder, what did we do wrong? Why aren't these churches still able to be vibrant ministries in their community? And I look around at the church in general right now, and I see so many churches that have shrunk in size since the pandemic, that have faithful people who are sitting in the pews wondering what in the world happened. And I think perhaps the church as a whole is poised with the disciples, all gathered together in one place, wondering, what do we do now? What's next? Where do we go from here? It is into that confusion and that grief and that sadness and that faithfulness, the faithfulness to sit and ask the question, it is into that moment that God sends God's Holy Spirit and God encourages the church to make a cacophonous noise, to show up and be visible in its community. And the disciples are visible. Suddenly they are so visible that they can't be ignored, that people are going, what? And they're drunk. They sure are making a lot of noise. What the heck? They become so visible that the whole community gathers round and says, what is this? which gives them the opportunity to answer the question. This is God's work. This is God acting in the community. This is the time and the place where God has something to say. And when I get into one of my funks where I'm feeling like the disciples not knowing when and where to go next, the Pentecost story inspires me because I know that God is still sending God's spirit to God's people and God's churches. I know that God is calling upon God's people and God's churches to continue to exist in their communities. And the work of being noisy and being noticed gives us the opportunity to say, what is this? This is God. This is Jesus Christ. This is the Holy Spirit continuing to work and function in this place. And so I invite us as a congregation to celebrate the ways we are already noisy and noticed in the community. Come on every first or third Wednesday of the month and you'll see this church being noisy and noticed. There's lots of people in and out the door for the food pantry and the clothing closet. Come every other Wednesday with me over to Preston Place and meet the few ladies who so desperately wanted to gather for worship that they asked their activity director to call the pastor at that church across the parking lot and see if she would come and do a worship service. It's a small group. There's three or four every other week when we gather but it is joyous. Come see the places where we are noisy in the community. And I invite us also to think about new ways 
that we can be noisy and we can be noticed so that people look at us and say, what is this? Why is it that you give away free food and free clothing? Why is it that you take the time to minister to the elders in our community? Why is it that you come here on Sunday morning and we can say, this is the work of God? God's Holy Spirit is still active and involved in our congregations. We are still about the ministry of the disciples from so long ago. And God still has a way forward and a plan. We may not know it. We may not always see much other than the one step ahead. But God is active. God is working in God's world. And God is encouraging God's people to be noisy, to be noticed, and to be about the work of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Our sermon hymn is number 63, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. So before we uh, start our prayers for today, I have one question about the list you handed me here. You've got an asterisk in the word home written down. What is that a prayer for? Nothing. That's just like a random word you decide to add to the paper to confuse me. <laughs> okay. Just checking, making sure we're not missing any prayers. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we pray that you send your Holy Spirit upon us in new and vibrant ways. We ask that you guide us as we go out into the world so that we have opportunity to testify to you and what you have done for us. 
We pray for all of the churches in this world that are wondering what is the steps and the path ahead. We pray for those that have faithfully closed their doors, especially St. John's. And we ask for your blessing. We pray this day, Lord, for those in need who are struggling in any way, especially, Lord, we pray for those who need your healing touch. We pray this day for Dallas and Christopher, Juliet and her family, Nadine and RJ, Lee and his family, Jean and Gwen, Tracy, Kim, Tammy and Paul. We ask for your blessing, your healing and your hope. And we pray for those who travel this Memorial Day. Keep them safe and bring them safely home to us. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Says it in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just as everything given to Jesus comes from God, everything given to us comes from Jesus the foremost human example of our faith. May we respond to that gift with joy, mindful of the ways God works in God's church, in this community, and in this world. Today we collect our offering with the plate at the back of the sanctuary. If you're joining us online, you can mail offerings to 887 Benell Avenue, Red Granite, Wisconsin, 54970. And even as that offering makes its way to us, we dedicate it back to God's work through our hearts and our hands and our ministry. Loving God, we remember that one of Christ's most important commandments is to love one another. With these gifts, help us show this love in our words and actions, caring for the vulnerable and offering hope in times of despair Amen. Our next hymn is 438, When Peace Like a River.
Please rise as you are able for our closing blessing. Christ sends us out to proclaim God's good news. God has done great work in us. Now go and let God work through us. Amen.